Hey, my name is Kai. This is going to be a breakdown of a song I made entirely on the OBZ called Reeling. I used stock synths, stock samples, I recorded the vocal directly into the OBZ mic, and I played and programmed all the notes in directly on the OBZ. No external devices used at all. The goal of this video is to pass along some OPZ knowledge and like some songwriting trips and ticks, uh, oh, tips and tricks that I have figured out and maybe they'll be useful to you. I do want to say that this is kind of more of an advanced tutorial. I'm not going to go into the, you know, minutia on how to use the OPZ. It's going to be more conceptual about like how to build a song. So why should you care what I have to say? Well, first of all, you can listen to the final result at the end of the video. And then here are also some uh, testimonials from random people on the internet. Truly random. Have no idea why these people are so nice, but I am very thankful for it. So what am I going to go over? I have some notes here on my phone. And basically, I'm going to go over what I think is the key to a good song. The physical process of making reeling song and loop structure and how I made them interesting and how I kind of thought about them. Sound design and mixing and then like some any like sound breakdowns for interesting sounds that I want to go through. So without further ado, let's get into the key to a good song. I think that this just boils down to having a core feeling or idea that the song is coming out of. And it doesn't even have to be vocal, you know, like this reeling does, like I do have to look in here, you know. I can't explain how I'm feeling being with you leaves me reeling. That hook, that vocal hook conveys the idea of the song but that's not necessarily, you know, something that you have to do in your song. I think there are plenty of songs that convey a feeling just through, you know, the orchestration and the melodies and the chords and stuff. So, reeling is based on a real experience that I had where I spent a day with a person. I was kind of like, whoa. Um, and I don't know if it was as intense for them or not. Um, but uh, it was all very confusing and thus the lyric was born. I knew I wanted like a B section and this is a song structure thing. I had like the A section, which is kind of like the main part. And then a B section is kind of like a, a part that you go to to give everybody a break from the A section and then want to return to the A section. Not that the B section can't be cool in its own right, but that's kind of how I think about it. And in this case, I wanted like another lyric that could complement. I can't explain how I'm feeling. Being with you leaves me reeling. So I figured out how are you? I don't know. How are you? I don't know. And it had to be really short too, because I just wanted to record this, the entire vocal into one sampler slot on the OPZ, which is only 12 seconds. So it had to be super short and super clear. Yeah, so I recorded it in one take directly into the OPZ's mic, and then I chopped it up in the sampler track, which maybe we can actually go take a look at that now. Really? If we go here. I can't explain how. Into the sampler I mode. can't explain how I'm feeling being with you leaves me reeling. So I cut up all of these, you know, syllables. How are you? I don't know. And then something else that I did in here was I adjusted each sample's I, individual, um, I, like it's, uh, I, 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 that's not what I want. I, <laughs> uh, I want this. I, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I um, I adjusted each sample's I, I, individual I, 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 uh, volume so that when I feed it through the um, effects that I'm using, which one of them is a distortion, I noticed that it really exacerbated the differences in volume between the samples. So I went through and for each of these, now I'm I, uh, each syllable, I adjusted the volume so they were kind of even. And I also did that with the pitch, which you could... <laughs> I I explain I can't explain I I I I adjusted the pitch like that for every sample to kind of get it in the same register to have it be even more subdued. And it's a really minor effect. I said it the line in a very monotone voice initially, so it's not that big of a change, but um it kind of went the extra way to making the vocal sound really polished. Let's talk a little bit about the physical process of making reeling itself. I probably took maybe like 30 or 40 hours to get this whole thing together. And I kind of just made it when I had free time. I was working from home at that point and just kind of like in between emails and as things were like on my downtime, I would just kind of do it. It just kind of like flowed out of me, which I think is partially came from the fact that I had such a clear idea for this song. So let's talk about the song structure. Um, I already mentioned that ABA thing. And in this case, it's kind of like ABA prime, as they say, like the alternate version, because we go from this, you know, I'm feeling that to like the drop, I guess, as you call it, which I consider still the A section. And then we have this B section. How are you? I don't know. How are you? I don't know. 
and then we go back to that initial lyric, the I'm reeling lyric, but it gets all fucked up. You know, so it's the same sound and like the drop is actually a, just a permutation of that initial, that first one. Um, so that's why I call it A prime. And I did that just to, you know, keep the song more interesting. One of the goals that I had with this song was to not make any four bar chunk be identical to any other one. I heard somewhere that Bruno Mars mixes it up like every two bars. He puts in some kind of ear candy or like a little fill or something every two bars. If you want to have interesting music, that is, you know, poppy or whatever in that realm, I think that that's a really good rule to follow. I'm pretty sure I heard that in a video essay and I tried really hard to find the video essay where I heard that, but I couldn't. But yes, Bruno Mars mixes it up every two bars and so should you. And there's many ways to, you know, mix it up. I think the easiest way is just to introduce something new, right? So you get like, you get the initial bass and kind of chords, then the vocal kicks in, that's a new thing. The drums also kick in a little bit more. And then, uh, oops, please stop that. You know, you get the lead then, which becomes another new element. So new elements adding on top of things obviously makes it fuller and you want all the elements to play together well. And we'll get to mixing and sound design later. But yeah, that's one of the first ways you can mix it up. Obviously another way is to change the pattern that you're playing. So like we can hear how the bass sound progresses maybe. Let's go here. Reeling. Reeling. So that's the first bass. Reeling. I don't think it's any different here. Feeling you. We can check out the third one. I think we're playing a little bit more here, but then obviously like once we get here, we develop that bass part a lot more. So we can go back to like this one. I'm feeling you know and then something else you can hear is how uh the uh we change the characteristic of the sound itself so um you know this where the filter is on this bass sound we hear a lot of more of that upper register than uh, when we were back here. You know, now that's more in the range of the other bass, but this one is all the way back down here. And I wanted to do that, you know, just to kind of like change the bass sound and evolve it as it goes along. And obviously this portion is a very bass heavy sound. And so I wanted that bass to have that extra little top end to kind of take center stage. And so I think that's a good way to think about it with the bass, how like the sound went from muffled to a little more top end. You can kind of think of that as a progression. And as I add the elements or I change them up, I try to think about how each one of them progresses the song. Do I want the song to get more exciting? Then I'll make all the parts a little more busy. Do I need the song to have a moment of rest? Well then we'll pull out almost everything and make it a little more muffled or really highlight something or put in a bunch of reverb so it spaces everything out. You try to make each one of those with intention to guide the shape of your song. And the kind of guide of this song is just like build, drop, break, B part, build, another drop. And so I just kind of like think about how things should fit those contours. Generally, I try to kind of make things work out in intervals of four or eight or 16, which I think is pretty common. There's one part, second part. Feeling. I'm feeling you. I'm feeling. I'm feeling. Uh, fourth part. Me with you. With me. I can't explain how I'm feeling. Being and then with this you. little break really for a second and then right into the drop. So four, four bar sections to go build up. A little, I think two bar hook, and then the core of the drop goes. Um, this is, how long is this? So I think these are all four bar sections, and I think the bass just repeats twice. Anyway, that's just kind of how I think about the macro structure. If I'm kind of struggling on like, how long do I stay on this intro part? I'm like, well, uh, have I expended all of my tricks to make it interesting and have I figured out where I want to go next? And if the answer is yes, then I 
just move on to the next part. And oftentimes I'm going back and like revising everything as I figure out new things and I come up with a new sound later on, I try to bring it back into the first part so it kind of foreshadows what's gonna happen next. Cool, let's talk a little bit about conditional trigs, which is a really great way to get, um, are they called conditional? Yeah, I guess that's what I'm gonna call them. Conditional trigs, where you go like, uh, like listen to this first part. No like high haggling sounds and snappy sounds yet. I'm reeling. And then just on that last bar, I use them as kind of a pre-fill to get into the second part. I'm reeling. Where they're very prominent. And so all of these fills are made um, with uh, the fucking, uh, this trig right here. So if I do that, you can tell that it happens only, maybe hopefully you can see this on camera, that the fourth light is blinking, meaning that all these, um, and it's not the same for all of them, but they only happen, see this pattern runs through four times and you don't hear it Reeling. until the fourth time. So every time uh, I come through, Reeling. Um, and I want to add a little bit of interest to the patterns, like mix it up every two bars. We'll just add some of these on the end of the, you know, this pattern so that it uh, mixes it up. And then also some other uses for them, I think. Let's go here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So actually, okay. Uh, mute. I'm just going to get this track. You can hear it's kind of like this TikTok, TikTok sound. And then on the last part, Um, it fills in, so like, uh, in the context of the build, the actual, like, drums get more intense as the thing progresses. Me with you. Me with me. Me with you. Me with me. I can't explain how I'm feeling being with you leaves me really. What else can I talk about? Cool, okay, yeah, let's go on to sound design and mixing. So, for me, the general goal of mixing is to have every sound sit in its own space. And on the OPZ, you can't make too many sounds, so it's not that hard. But still, um, there's like panning and like using the filter and things to kind of EQ things um, and move them into various positions that I think help a lot. So for example, check out this drop. And then here, what happens to the bass when the next lead comes in. I'm failing. Hear how the filter went down to give the lead some more room. Um, and then, like, definitely on places like this, how are you? I don't know. How you can hear you? that the chords here are off to the right side. Um, and that, uh, when we get this sound, the, um, kind of that, um, higher do 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 sound is off to the left. And I just space those out because, you know, they don't need to clash with each other as much if they are spaced out. And so, yeah, that's one of the best tricks, I think, on the OPZ is to use the filter as an EQ. What else? Okay, let's do some sound breakdowns. Let's check out this voice section first. I can't explain. I'm just gonna hide everything except the voice. We'll do it over here so I don't fuck up the other mute group. I can't explain how I'm feeling being. So this voice has, I, can't explain. Uh, I just recorded it directly into the OPZ mic right here, and I can't sing at all. Um, so I leaned into like the whatever raspy, low, monotone, sad voice that I can do. And then, you know, I chopped it up, obviously. We talked about that. I just the Yeah, okay, so then this has a little bit of filtering. I can't explain how I'm feeling being with you leaves me reeling. If we put it at the middle. I can't explain how I'm feeling being with you leaves me reeling. So I have filtered it up a little bit, bring brought like a high pass filter in just to kind of clear up like any rumbly sounds that come from like finger noise on the OBZ or anything and just to get like the voice not clashing with the kick and the bass and stuff at all. And I, I felt that, that I could get it sitting I can't explain nicely it. in the mix like that. And then yeah, there's a little bit of distortion on here. I can't explain how I'm feeling being with you leaves me reeling. I can't explain how I'm feeling being. Which I found just adds like a little bit of muffliness and like crunchiness to the voice, which I really liked. A note about using effects on the OPZ because you only get two of them. You gotta be careful about how reliant your sounds are on effects. For example, I use this fill a lot that is made with an arpeggio. So. Wait for it, wait for it. Yeah, that thing. Um, so uh, 
it's just a arpeggio that's cranked up really fast with a bunch of reverb and distortion, but the sound doesn't work at all without the reverb and distortion. So if I wanted to use a different effect, like a delay or something or a phase, whatever other effects there are for like a different pattern for a different thing, I couldn't without compromising this sound. I just kind of worked with it. Um, but that is something to know when going into the OPZ that if like you need a sound that is effects driven, you're going to be stuck with those effects for like your whole project. If you're not cool changing that sound in certain parts. Let's talk about the bass. Um, yeah, so um, this bass, I just kind of shaped with the filter and distortion, got some distortion going, cranked the resonance up, and then swept the filter until I found cool parts that I liked. And all of these things I played in by hand pretty much. So if we like go look at the bass. It took many, many tries and like attempts at just like one note and like a lot of nudging with the micro timings and stuff to get it to sound like really locked in and funky. Part of that is like I, I had a very, you know, there's a very short attack and very short release on this sound, which makes it very expressive, but it doesn't make it as forgiving with timing. And so I think that was definitely the most challenging thing about this was playing all those sounds in on the uh, this keyboard. But honestly, it wasn't that bad. Like you can do it and chords and stuff too. And same thing with the lead, you know, I wanted to keep the lead sound very expressive. Uh, so it has a little bit of like that uh, filter envelope going on to get that, sorry, to get that. And then the release is not long at all to kind of give it, to keep it very funky. And same thing as the bass, I played this in and it took a fucking lot of tries to get a good melody going and everything. This build uh, is a fun bit of sound design. Um, I can't explain now with you. We'll go check this out. Are you now? How are you now? Yeah. You know. So this is just the lead sound um, with portamento cranked way up and just playing rising notes to get this you know, um, to get this build sound. Um, so that's kind of a little fun bit of sound design. And I just found like the most saw-ish sounding synth that I could find on here. Whoa, okay. Drums, they're really not that special. <laughs> um, let's go here and just hit me with like a, oh, am I, did I fuck up? Yes, but. No more. This is pretty much it. Um, they get a little bit more thumpy towards the drop. Yeah, that kick is fucking huge. And I think it has a little bit of reverb on it. Um, and then sometimes like I pitch these drum sounds down to use as sound designy elements or transition pieces. So if you hear like a crash or something, it's probably just like a, a pitch down symbol or something with like a long delay or something on it. That is one of the things that I like about this is that don't don't be afraid to use like the the whack, you know, high, like these are, those are fun like sequence sounds. I guess we can just talk about this last portion. We're talking about this fucking sick. This is just, uh, I think I just slowed, I mean, obviously pitched and slowed the voice way down. Um, uh, and you can see that it has been, uh, you know, we only hit it on the second time through. Uh, obviously it's been conditionally trigged. Same with here. And that's it pretty much. I think that was a little bit scatterbrained, but hopefully with the magic of editing, I'll be able to put this together into a 
package that's useful to follow and that hopefully maybe that gives you some ideas on how you can use the OPZ to create even more complex and interesting songs than you already have. Last thing about sequencing that I want to say is that this is very much not playable in the same way that like maybe a traditional OPZ track where you're just kind of like doing mute groups and things to like progress and build your track. Like each one of these, I used literally every possible pattern slot on Project 7 to make like a two minute song. And there's no like flexibility in there, you know? Like because how the conditional trigs are, like at the end of a bar, if they're a fill to lead into the next bar, the patterns don't really work in any other order. So that is a little bit of a downside to making a song like this on the OPZ. It's not as performable and playable like the other style of making a song is. But that's not what I set out to do with this particular track. So anyway, that's basically it. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you had a good time. Um, I hope that I didn't bore you at least. And uh, with that being said, my name is Kai and I'm gonna let this play us out.